your peace is with me Father, I am safe Father, your peace is with me Father, I am safe Your peace is with me Father, I am safe Your peace is with me Oh, Father, I am safe your peace surrounds me, Father, your peace surrounds me. Where I go, your peace goes there, goes there with me. It sheds its light on everyone, everyone I meet. It, I bring it to the desolate and lonely and afraid. I bring it to the desolate and lonely and afraid. I give your peace to those who suffer pain. Or grief or loss or think they are bereft of hope and happiness. I give your peace to those who suffer, who suffer pain. Or grief or loss or think they are bereft of hope or who think they are bereft of hope and happiness send them to me father let me bring your peace with me for I would save your son as is your will that I may come to recognize, recognize myself. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. And so we go in peace, and so we go, we go in peace. To all the world we give the message that we have received And thus we come to hear the voice for God Who speaks to us as we relate, as we relate His word Whose love we recognize because he, we share, because we share the word that he has given, that he has given unto us. Your peace is with me. Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me. Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me. Father, I am safe. And yesterday we never did sing that little bit that was out of the text at the last uh, couple sentences in our text reading. So let's do it today, right now. Mm -hmm. Chapter 26. If you seek injustice anywhere, you need but say. If you see injustice anywhere, but say, by this do I deny the presence of the Father and the Son, and I would rather know of them than see injustice, which their presence shines away. By this do I deny the presence of the Father and the Son, and I would rather know of them than see injustice, which their presence shines away. And our lesson again today, 
Be sure to do your two longer periods, morning and evening, thinking about it, and your hourly remembrance and thanksgiving. Say, your peace is with me. Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me. Father, I am safe. I think we'll read our lesson, uh, uh, the part that goes with our lesson, What is the World, instead of singing it today. Some people get it better when I read it. Some people get it better when I sing it. So we'll just read it today. Your peace is with me, Father. I am safe. Thank you all so much for joining me here today in my walnut grove on my place. One of my walnut groves. Got a couple of them. Uh, here it's, I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks. And it's uh, Lesson 245, Your Peace is With Me, Father, I Am Safe. Sunday, September 1st of 2024. What is the world? The world is false perception. It is born of error and it has not left its source. It will remain no longer than the thought that gave it birth is cherished. When the thought of separation has been changed to one of true forgiveness, Will the world be seen in quite another light, and one which leads to truth, where all the world must disappear and all its errors vanish? Now its source has gone and its effects are gone as well. The world was made as an attack on God. It symbolizes fear. And what is fear except love's absence? Thus the world was meant to be a place where God could enter not, and where his Son could be apart from him. Here was perception born, for knowledge could not cause such insane thoughts to be apart from God. That's an insane thought. <laughs> but eyes deceive and ears hear falsely. Now mistakes become quite possible, for certainty has gone. The mechanisms of illusion have been born instead. And now they go to find what has been given them to seek. Their aim is to fulfill the purpose which the world was made to witness and make real. They see in its illusions but a solid base where truth exists, upheld apart from lies. Yet everything that they report is but illusion, which is kept apart from truth. As sight was made to lead away from truth, it can be redirected. Sounds become the call for God, and all perception can be given a new purpose by the one whom God appointed Savior to the world. Follow his light and see the world as he beholds it. Hear his voice alone in all that speaks to you, and let him give you peace and certainty, which you have thrown away, but heaven has preserved for you in him. Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Now, if you don't want to be content about something, here's something to be in content. Not normally we would always want to be content, but he's using it in kind of a unique way. Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world. For we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ, that what was made to die can be restored to everlasting life. Okay, well, let's go look at our text reading. And uh, we're ready to start chapter 27, The Healing of the Dream. And before we read it, and we'll be reading the section one, which is the picture of crucifixion. And before we read it, uh, let's, out of holidays and observances, uh, here's what I found is going on today. Bowling League Day, Building and Code Staff Appreciation Day, Chicken Boy Day. Chicken Boy is a big statue out on on uh, Route 66 in Los Angeles. 22 foot tall uh, man body chicken head. <laughs> Emma M. Nutt Day. Uh, she was the first female telephone operator. 1860, 1915 was her dates, but she did the first. She did the first uh, telephone operator. Uh, job on this day in 1818. We had telephones around for, well, just getting close, well, about 200 years. Isn't that something? 
Ginger Cat Appreciation Day, the Felis Catus. Uh, Cherry Popover Day, cherries are the Prunus avium. No Rhyme Nor Reason Day. <laughs> we want to have reason. We don't necessarily have to have the rhyme part, but we definitely want to live according to reason because the Holy Spirit's always reasonable, even though you may not understand the reason initially. Uh, tofu Day. Tofu made from soybeans. Uh, Pet Rock Day. Pink Cadillac Day. Save Japan's Dolphins Day. Dolphins, the Delphinus Delphus is the genus and species. Uh, toy Tips Executive Toy Test Day. Waddle Day. Waddle Day is the first day of spring. It's not really the, the it's not the equinox, but it's getting close. Uh, but it's the first day of spring in Australia. They count today being, I think all the acacia trees are in bloom, which is, that's the genus, acacia. But there's, a, I think I read there were 1,200 species of acacias. But they also call them the wattle tree, and they're all in bloom right now. Uh, probably real beautiful. World Letter Writing Day. And then uh, the Niagara Grape out of Edible Landscaping. The Vitus Lambrusca. And let's uh, see what Edible Landscaping says about the Vitus Lambrusca. Niagara is a... Uh, the, the Niagara grape. Niagara is a verse is as versatile as Concord. Welch's white grape juice is made from the fruits of this vine. Remember the Concord grape? That's the Welch's um, regular blue uh, grape juice. Well, they're white grapes. They use the Niagara. And Welch's white grape juice is made from the fruits of this vine, very productive and vigorous and deliciously sweet. Usually needs at least one spray for black rot or bag the bunches. Space eight foot in row on a six foot high trellis, zones three through seven. So there's your, there's your uh, Vitus Lambrusca, uh, the Niagara grape. Okay, let's go take a look and keep along with you today. Our idea that we're to tell ourselves every hour and be sure during that hour of pause of saying your peace is with me, Father, I am safe, to find something to give God thankful for, give thanks for and to ask for guidance. And I tell you, try to tell you every day because I'm trying to remember. It's, a, it's one of the more challenging parts of A Course in Miracles is those hourly remembrances for me. Okay. Chapter 27, The Healing of the Dream, The Picture of Crucifixion. The wish to be unfairly treated is a compromise attempt that would combine attack and innocence. Who can combine the holy incompatible and make a unity of what can never join? Walk you the gentle way, and you will fear no evil and no shadows in the night. But place no terror symbols on your path. Or you will weave a crown of thorns from which your brother and yourself will not escape. You cannot crucify yourself alone. And if you are unfairly treated, he must suffer the unfairness that you see. You cannot sacrifice yourself alone, for sacrifice is total. If it could occur at all, it would entail the whole of God's creation and the Father with the sacrifice of his beloved Son. To. In your release from sacrifice is his made manifest and shown to be his own. But every pain you suffer do you see as proof that he is guilty of attack. Thus would you make yourself to be the sign that he has lost his innocence and need but look on you to realize that he has been condemned. And what to you has been unfair will come to him in righteousness. The unjust vengeance that you suffer now belongs to him. And when it rests on him, are you set free? Wish not to make yourself a living symbol of his guilt, for you will not escape the death you made for him. But in his innocence, you find your own. Find your own innocence when you see your brother is innocent. Don't sacrifice your happiness or your brother's. See the innocence in him. Paragraph 3. Whenever you consent to suffer pain, to be deprived, unfairly treated, or in need of anything, you but accuse your brother of attack upon God's Son. 
you hold a picture of your crucifixion before his eyes, that he may see his sins are writ in heaven in your blood and death, and go before him closing off the gate and damning him to hell. Yet this is writ in hell and not in heaven, where you are beyond attack and prove his innocence. The picture of yourself you offer him, you show yourself, and give it all your faith. The Holy Spirit offers you to give to him a picture of yourself in which there is no pain and no reproach at all. And what was martyred to his guilt becomes the perfect witness to his innocence. 3. The power of witness is beyond belief because it brings conviction in its wake. The witness is believed because he points beyond himself to what he represents. A sick and suffering you but represents your brother's guilt, the witness that you send, lest he forget the injuries he gave, from which you swear he never will escape. The sick and sorry picture you accept, if only it can serve to punish him, the sick and merciless to everyone, The sick are merciless to everyone, and in contagion do they seek to kill. Death seems an easy price, if they can say, Behold me, brother, at your hand I die. For sickness is the witness to his guilt, and death would prove his errors must be sins. Sickness is but an, in quotes, little death, a form of vengeance not yet total. Yet it speaks with certainty for what it represents, the bleak and bitter picture you have sent your brother, you have looked upon in grief. And everything that it has shown to him have you believed, because it witnessed to the guilt in him which you perceived and loved. Oh my. Paragraph 5. Now in the hands made gentle by his touch, the Holy Spirit lays a picture of a different you. It is a picture of a body still, for what you really are cannot be seen nor pictured. (laughs) Yet this one has not been used for purpose of attack and therefore never suffered pain at all. It witnessed to the eternal truth that you cannot be hurt and points beyond itself to both your innocence and his. Show this unto your brother who will see that every scar is healed and every tear is wiped away in laughter and in love. And he will look on his forgiveness there, and with healed eyes will look beyond it to the innocence that he beholds in you. Here is the proof that he has never sinned, that nothing which his madness bid him do was ever done, or ever had effects of any kind, that no reproach he laid upon his heart was ever justified, and no attack can ever touch him with the poisoned and relentless sting of fear. So you show him that his sins make no difference because they don't affect you. You see his innocence. Six, attest his innocence and not his guilt. Your healing is his comfort and his health because it proves illusions are not true. It is, it is not will for life but wish for death that is the motivation for this world. Its only purpose is to prove guilt real. No worldly thought or act or feeling has a motivation other than this one. These are the witnesses that are called forth to be believed and lend conviction to the system they speak for and represent. And each has many voices speaking to your brother and yourself in different tongues. And yet to both the message is the same. Adornment of the body seeks to show how lovely are the witnesses for guilt. (laughs) Concern about the body demonstrates how frail and vulnerable is your life. How easily destroyed is what you love. Depression speaks of death and vanity of real concern for anything at all. Depression speaks of death and vanity of real concern with anything at all. 7. The strongest witness to futility that bolsters all the rest and helps them paint the picture in which sin is justified is sickness in whatever form it takes. The sick have reason for each one of their unnatural desires and strange needs, for who could live a life so soon cut short 
and not esteem the worth of passing joys. What pleasures could there be that will endure? Are not the frail entitled to believe that every stolen scrap of pleasure is their righteous payment for their little lives? Their death will pay the price for all of them if they enjoy their benefits or not. The end of life must come, whatever way that life be spent. And so take pleasure in the quickly passing and ephemeral. Of course, that's looking at it from the upside down perspective of the ego. Paragraph 8. These are not sins, but witnesses under the strange belief that sin and death are real. And innocence and sin will end alike within the termination of the grave. If this were true, there would be reason to remain content to seek for passing joys and cherish little pleasures where you can. Yet in this picture is the body not perceived as neutral and without a goal inerrant in itself. For it becomes the symbol of reproach, the sign of guilt whose consequences still are there to see, so that the cause can never be denied. 9. Your function is to show your brother sin can have no cause. Your function is to show your brother that sin can have no cause. How futile must it be to see yourself a picture of the proof that what your function is can never be. The Holy Spirit's picture changes not the body into something it is not. It only takes away from it all signs of accusation and blamefulness. Pictured without a purpose, it is seen as neither sick nor well, nor bad nor good. No grounds are offered that it may be judged in any way at all. It has no life, but neither is it dead. It stands apart from all experience of love or fear. For now it witnesses to nothing, yet its purpose being open and the mind made free again to choose what it is for. Now is it not condemned, but waiting for a purpose to be given, that it may fulfill the function that it will receive. He wants us to have that open slate where we recognize that the body's neutral it, or the, the body is nothing. It's, it, it, uh, it's actually the service of God. That's its reality if it had any reality at all. But he's saying, look at it as, as, a, as a, a not good or bad. And, and then out of, out of that clean slate, you'll be able to sh show what the Holy Spirit can use it for. He'll, he'll go on and explain that in paragraph 10. Into this empty space from which the goal of sin has been removed is heaven free to be remembered. Here its peace can come and perfect healing take the place of death. The body can become a sign of life, a promise of redemption, and a breath of immortality to, the, to those grown sick of breathing in the fetid scent of death. <laughs> Let it have healing as its purpose. Let your body have healing as its purpose. Then will it send forth the message it received and by its health and loveliness proclaim the truth and value that it represents. Let it receive the power to represent an endless life forever unattacked. And to your brother, let its message be, Behold me, brother, at your hand I live. Wow, see your life, your, see God in your brothers. And the last paragraph to finish this section. The simple way to let this be achieved is merely this, to let the body have no purpose from the past when you were sure you knew its purpose was to foster guilt. For this insists... Your crippled picture is a lasting sign of what it represents. This leaves no space in which a different view, another purpose, can be given it. You do not know its purpose. You but gave illusions of a purpose to a thing you made to hide your function from yourself. This thing without a purpose cannot hide the function that the Holy Spirit gave. Let then its purpose and your function both be reconciled at last, and seen as one. Let then its purpose and your function, let your, let your body follow your function, which is what's your fu function? To be the light of the world, we learned. To, to practice forgiveness. Let then its purpose and your function both be reconciled at last and seen as one. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's see. Let's, let's go ahead and and uh, we have enough time. Let's read through our lesson once again. 
and then we'll close with our song. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Your peace surrounds me, Father. Where I go, your peace goes there with me. It sheds its light on everyone I meet. I bring it to the desolate and lonely and afraid. I give your peace to those who suffer pain or grief for loss or think they are bereft of hope and happiness. Send them to me, Father. Let me bring your peace with me, for I would save your son as is your will, that I may come to recognize myself. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. And so we go in peace. To all the world we give the message that we have received, and thus we come to hear the voice for God, who speaks to us as we relate his word, whose love we recognize because we share the word that he has given unto us. And what, what's that word he's given unto us? Peace. And that, that, Let's talk about our word for peace. It's out of, out of the Mawu language of, of Guinea and the Ivory Coast. And the word is holla. So holla be with you. Let's take that holla to everybody. Your peace is given me, Father. I am safe. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Your peace surrounds me, Father, oh, your peace surrounds me, Father. Where I go, your holla goes there, peace goes there with me. It sheds its light on everyone, on everyone I meet. I bring it to the desolate and lonely and afraid. I give your peace to those who suffer, those who suffer pain, or grief for loss, or think they are bereft of hope and happiness. Send them to me, Father, let me bring your peace with me. Send them to me, Father, let me bring your holla to me, with me. Send them to me, Father, let me bring your peace with me. For I would save your son, as is your will. That I may come to recognize myself. And so we go, and so we go, so we go in peace. To all the world we give the message that we have received. And thus we come to hear the voice, hear the voice for God. Who speaks to us as we relate, as we relate his word, whose love we recognize because we share the word, we share the word that he has, that he has given us. Your peace is with me, Father, I am saved. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe, as they say in New Guinea, or, or Guinea, or an Ivory Coast, we'll say it. Your holla is with me, Father, I am safe, of course they might say, Mother, I'm safe. Your holla is with me, Mother, I am safe. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Your peace is with me, Father, I am safe. Allah.